Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. I am Paul, U.S. Army combat veteran, and today we are taking a look at a video showing Ukrainian howitzers in action, and we are going to be breaking down what you may not understand about the difference between a tank and a self-propelled howitzer, which, as you can see here in the video, looks just like a tank. Let's get into it. So again, what we're looking at here is a self-propelled howitzer. Now, what makes these things different from a tank? Well, the answer is, in terms of a battlefield role, they couldn't be more different, right? Let's start by taking a look at how they're similar. Guys, I wanted to thank today's video sponsor, Roman. Did you know that 52% of men will experience ED at some point in their lives? It's not just a health issue. ED can affect your confidence and self-image as a guy. Thankfully, if you have ED concerns, Roman is here to help. Roman is a digital health clinic for men. It allows you to be evaluated, diagnosed, and if appropriate, treated by a US licensed health provider with FDA approved treatments, all from the comfort of your own home. Roman connects you with a US licensed medical provider who is going to evaluate uh, and if appropriate, prescribe treatment. And since Roman's a digital platform, it's done all over the internet. Of course, with Roman, shipping is discreet and two-day shipping is free. ED treatments can start for as little as $2 a dose, and the initial visit and follow-ups are always free. Roman also deals with other male health concerns like hair loss. Get $15 off your first order if you're prescribed treatment by using my link getroman.com slash CVR. That's getroman.com slash CVR. And thanks again to Roman for sponsoring today's video. First, they both have treads, no doubt about it. And they both have crew members that sit inside the uh, unit, the crew area, right? They both have ammunition, a large gun coming out the front. In fact, to a lay observer, they look very, very similar. But watch the howitzers in action and you'll see right away the difference between them and a conventional tank. Look at the angle that that turret is pointed. That turret is pointed at such, at such a huge angle, right? Because they are not engaging targets within their own line of sight. Instead, they are throwing their rounds in a huge arc covering probably up to 10 miles. Uh, that's what, 25 kilometers, something like that. And the intent is not to engage targets directly, but to provide indirect fire support uh, to troops on the front lines. So there are enemy, again, 25 kilometer, up to 25 kilometers away, then these tanks are being fed coordinates to where the enemy is located, and they are then angling their guns at just the right angle so that they can lob rounds into the target, like a quarterback throwing a football into the end zone right he may not see through the defenders but he just has to have faith that his one of his receivers is going to be there similarly these guys are getting mathematically precise coordinates where the enemy is Pro chances are either onboard computers or a fire direction center a um a coordination cell in a third location is going to take those lo enemy location uh data it's going to convert them into an exact firing angle for these howitzers. The howitzers are going to adjust their gun in just the right way so that the rounds they shoot are going to land directly on the target. Yep, you can see these are massively powerful rounds and they are, these two howitzers are close together so that when they both target fire rounds at the same target, they're covering a greater area, not just a greater, and they're offset because that will enable them to hit an area, this different areas, both vertically and horizontally. It also can make it tougher to, uh, for enemy aircraft or enemy um, counter batteries you know, the enemy has their, could have their own howitzers that are trying to find the location of Ukrainian howitzers. 
makes it a little harder to dial in exactly where they are. But why do they look so much like tanks? Well, one reason is, is simply design, right? They are, they have a similar function to a tank in the sense that there's a main gun that does most of the work and that they have to load that main gun from inside the tank and it needs to operate on all terrain. You've already solved those problems with the with a battle tank, so why not just use the same concept with uh, what's called a self-propelled howitzer? That's certainly true, but it's also true that these howitzers are expected often to actually support main battle tanks in battle. They don't just support dismounted infantry, but they need to be able to keep up with tanks on the battlefield. So wherever a tank can go, these howitzers need to be able to follow. That way, when the tanks are pushing into, say, a city or being engaged by enemy on, say, a far hillside, even if the tanks themselves can't shoot over the hill, those howitzers may be able to. And so, because again, think about the angle, right? If you have a hill, let's say my delicious coffee cup, it's the hill, the enemy is on the far side and you're a tank on the near side, a tank on the near side won't be able to shoot over the hill. But a howitzer far away could be able to go up and come down and hit that enemy on the far side of the hill. So howitzers bring a totally different... Um, weapon system to the fight because of the different angle that they attack they can literally shoot over terrain that would otherwise be protecting the enemy and when it's when howitzers are used in coordination and collaboration with tanks and infantry they can become a devastating tool to enemy that may otherwise think that they're safe You may notice here that they're firing one at a time and there could be a couple of reasons for that one might be that they have the enemy and they want to keep them suppressed they want a steady beat a drumbeat of fire so that the enemy can't ever come out from behind their cover and maneuver uh, it could be because they're doing what's called bracketing and bracketing is when there are you can mathematically calculate where the round will land very, very precisely, but there are, there's still going to be imperfections, uh, tiny changes in elevation, tiny changes in the humidity, the wind, even the rotation of the earth can have impacts on where a round lands. And so what you want to do is you want to basically use each round as a test. So let's say you shoot a round and it lands 300 meters to the west of your enemy location you're going to radio that back to the howitzers or to the fire direction center and you're going to say hey you need to move 300 meters east so they do that and then let's say they land 50 meters to the west well now you figured out okay the, the angle you want to hit the perfect angle to hit the enemy is between this point and this point and then slowly you perfect you walk the rounds onto the target until eventually you get to the point where those rounds are hitting right precisely where the enemy is. And at that point, you call a fire for effect. And I think we're going to see that here in a second. Right, they're probably continuing to bracket. See, there's the second. There you go. See, they fired together. That says that, yes, we've got the enemy located. Fire for effect, which means fire to actually deliver lethal rounds onto the target. We found the enemy. This is the location. This is exactly the right angle. Put rounds down range. And there in the distance, you can see 25 kilometers away is their engagement area. Pretty impressive. And Again, an essential part of the battlefield, right? We think of artillery as being something of the World War II era, but it's not on the modern battlefield. It absolutely has a place. Thanks so much for joining me. Um, if you want access to some exclusive content, check out the, patron, uh, the Patreon page. And also, also, I have a dream of getting to 100K. I really want that silver plaque up there. If you enjoyed this video, man, hit subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything. It doesn't mean you're going to see every single one of my videos, right? The algorithm will still just show you stuff you want to see, but it will help me prove that I'm making this a real job. All right, guys, thanks so much. I'll see you in the next one.